Hi guys, welcome to the second edition of Some Viral Facts. And in this episode, we'll be discussing about the pathological changes which happens if a patient is infected with COVID-19. Most of the pathological changes which have been discussed are not very specific and can occur in any viral disease. And not going more into details of this, I would like to hand over everything to Dr. Harveen, who is a pathologist and will be with us for next 5 minutes. Hi friends, this is Dr. Harveen, third year resident in MD Pathology. How are you all? It's been such a long, a long time we have been locked on in this COVID pandemic thing. I'm sure you must have collected a lot of information about this COVID-19 thing through media or through other resources. I'm sure some of them are true but some of them can be misleading as well. In this video, I will be discussing about what pathologists say about this COVID-19. We all know that the patient generally presents either with fever, cold, cough and breathlessness or difficulty in breathing. Samples which we collect for these patients can be the normal blood sample, the bronchoalveolar lavage, the tracheal sample or the sputum. The blood samples are generally collected in the EDTA tubes. These EDTA tubes are the normal anticoagulant tubes which we also use for the normal CBC or the normal blood test. After collection of these tubes, it is mandatory that the tubes are generally stored at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius if they are not tested on the same time or at the same uh, day. If the tube has to be stored for a longer period of time or it has to be transported, then the temperature has to be lowered down according to the time of day or time of storage it has to be done. The hematological parameters for these patients. What, what kind of changes do we see in the blood for these patients? The patient's hematological parameters would change as per the viral change, as per the normal virus changes in a patient. So if we look at the CBC, that is a complete blood count for this patient, we might see that there is leukopenia in these patients. Leukopenia is decreasing WBC count. Studies have also revealed that besides leukopenia, there is also lymphopenia or there might be lymphocytosis in which the patient will show atypical lymphocytes. There are some studies which also show, shows that along with leukopenia, there is also thrombocytopenia in these patients. Besides these hematological parameters that is RBC, WBC and platelets, these patients also have abnormal coagulopathy. This abnormal coagulopathy is because of increase in the D-dimer of fibrinogen. Because of this abnormal coagulopathy, the patient may present with abnormal or variations in its PT and APTT. Besides this, there are various inflammatory markers which kind of raise in the body, for example CRP. And these are the general presentation or the parameters variations which we see in these COVID patients. Besides this, as I told, besides the blood sample, we can also collect the bronchioalveolar sample or the sputum for this patient. A cytospin of this sample is done and it is observed under the microscope. We see atypical pneumocytes, we see multinucleated cells. We see lymphoplasma cytic infiltrate. Besides this, we also see some cells showing nuclear or cytoplasmic inclusions. These inclusions can also be seen in other viral diseases. So it cannot be excluded. But yes, it can give us a hint. So in cytological, uh, cytologically, we see that viral inclusion bodies which are seen and atypical cells, lymphoplasma cytic infiltrate and multinucleated giant cells. We all know that the complexity or the dangerous part of this disease is breathlessness or development of acute respiratory distress syndrome that is ARDS. We see the histopathological changes as that of the pneumonia or ARDS in such cases. We will see intraalveolar edema, we will see intraalveolar hemorrhage, there is lot of alveolar edema, there is intraalveolar fibrin formation. Just as in uh, pneumonia, we see the lymphoplasmacytic infiltrates along with the extravasated red blood cells and fibrin formation. We have pneumocyte hyperplasia and there is thickening of the hyaline membrane which is seen on histopathological samples. For all these COVID patients, the features which we observe as a hematological parameter or cytological parameter histopathological is nothing but almost similar to that we see in other viral diseases or viral inclusion diseases. Now for uh, confirming the disease, we have two types of tests which are being used that is a rapid diagnostic screening test as well as a real-time PCR test. 
Rapid diagnostic screening test whose sensitivity is low works on the production of the antibody which are the soldiers which are produced against the antigens which enter our body. So once the antibody is produced inside the body, we come to know that the body might have come across the antigen. So there might be production of IgM and IgG and the rapid diagnostic screening test detects the presence of this IgM and IgG which indicates that the body has come across that infection or antigen or we can say the corona. But however the sensitivity of this test is around only 30 to 50 percent. Besides this, the patient might be in the incubation period that is the antibodies are not developed in the patient as a result the test might be negative. So in order to confirm or the confirmatory test is a real time PCR test which uses the genetic material of the virus. The real time PCR multiplies or amplifies and looks for the genetic material for this virus and gives the confirmation of it. Besides this, we all know how does the present patient present, patient might, might have fever or cold, cough, the severity of the disease is ARDS. So one should not panic at all. First thing is that one should just self-isolate or put into himself into the quarantine so that the others don't get affected. You need to see a doctor only when you develop breathlessness or the disease goes on to the severity or the patients with comorbid conditions like hypertension, diabetes, immunosuppression, people who are already having suppressed immunity. So my only advice is that as the old sayings are, prevention is better than cure. So we should, one should prevent in spite of getting treated for the disease. I know it is not the best time to stay at home since these are not the holidays which we have got during the festivities. But this is an alarming situation. The pandemic has come. We all have to stay united and fight against it by staying at home, by staying safe, by staying protected, by protecting ourselves and our family members. All my regards and best wishes to you. Stay at home, stay safe. So that was the end of Some Viral Facts Episode 2 specifically pertaining to pathology i hope you liked it if you liked it please press like so that this video can come up in recommendations by youtube and can reach to as many people as possible thank you hope to see you soon with the third edition